I think the report has been significant partly because of its timing. It came out when we were experiencing higher food prices than we've experienced for 40 years and greatly increased food price volatility. And this has really raised the significance of food within the policy world. And people are wondering about the confluence of what John Beddington, the chief scientist, calls a perfect storm. We're going to see greatly increased demand, more people, richer people demanding a varied, more varied food uh, a collection of foods, many of which have a greater impact in the environment. We're going to see increasing pressures on the supply side, various uh, supply side shocks, for example, from increased frequency of drought, increased fr frequency of floods, etc. And um, all this we're going to see as climate change becomes increasingly important. Well, in, in DEFRA, we, it has really become the, the lodestar but which guides all our work. We've used it to support uh, our, our climate risk assessment, our ecosystems analysis, it obviously underlay last year's uh, in Natural Environment White Paper, and perhaps most of all, the, what we call the Green Food Project, which is trying to work out how we produce more and impact on the environment less, bringing together all different aspects of concern about producing food and doing so sustainably. Well, in our department, in the Department for International Development, uh, throughout our country offices in all the countries of operation, and indeed in our general research, which is being applied across everything we do, this is now a, a seam which is essential to the way we think about uh, everything. And above all, it's to make sure it isn't a report that just sits on a shelf, however good it is, but it is implementable. And it's looking at the key issues of behaviour change. How do you incentivise human beings to do their best and right things, both for the, themselves and their interaction with the planet, and the intensification of, of food, both in terms of its productivity, its production, uh, and making these things uh, simple enough in terms of the science so that everybody understands it and realises why this imperative needs to be followed. Well, from my point of view, this report was extremely important because it provided a well-timed and comprehensive benchmark of the pressures which global agriculture is facing today and the pressures it will face in the future. And it's also very well-timed because of the ongoing debate about the European Common Agricultural Policy and also the uh, Horizon 2020 research programme. Ah, well, from my point of view, the importance of the report with the British Chamber of Commerce is that it gave us the chance with the Food Security, Safety and Sustainability Task Force, it gave us the chance to bring the international business community together with policy makers, with representatives of the, of the entire food chain um, to discuss the magnitude of the issues facing the global food and farming system. The Foresight Report gives us that opportunity to open that debate up and talk freely amongst ourselves about what future we want together. Is it one of shared prosperity, where we will seek to share those resources so that everybody has enough food to eat and everybody can go to bed with knowing that they have food security for tomorrow, or one of dog-eat-dog, -dog where some people will get enough and others will not? Well, with a billion people going to bed hungry, there's a heck of a lot more to do. Those people are going to bed hungry not because of there's not enough food in the world, but because they don't have the income to be able to buy that food. It's an obscenity that we live in such a world, so there's a huge amount to do. But we have the opportunity to put those things right. I think that the international community does recognise, in a way that probably five years ago it didn't, the importance of food security to the world. Uh, I think also that we need to be thinking about putting food security in the context of climate change as well. Climate change is happening, um, it will continue to happen, and if we are to feed the increasing number of people on earth, then we need to be thinking about an agriculture that develops in a way that it doesn't significantly increase greenhouse gas production as it increases its own production.